Hey everybody, my name is Catherine. Welcome back to my channel. I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. Today I'm going to be doing some ice dyeing with these onesies and this is the finished result. I think they turned out super cute. Be sure to hit the like button for this video and subscribe for a new video every Thursday. So the first thing we're going to do is go over supplies. I started out with some cotton onesies that have been pre-washed, rubber bands, soda ash, scissors, drop cloths to keep the workspace tidy, Procyon dye or tie dye, a dusk mask, plastic trays to collect the ice runoff, cardboard, a stapler, ice, gloves, and Synthropol for washing. I will put all of the links for everything I used in this video down in the description below. So I've pre-washed my onesies to make sure all the sizing is off of them. I've put down my drop cloth, I've got my gloves on, and I have my rubber bands handy. The next thing I'm gonna do is start to scrunch up my onesies to prep them for the dye. So I'm just gonna kind of evenly scrunch them up into a little disc. And then I'm going to put rubber bands around this disc to kind of secure it. And I want it to be more flat, like a disc, than a ball because I want to have more surface area exposed to have the dye get into all those nooks and crannies. So that one's ready to go. And then next I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to accordion fold it into quarters and it's very small since it's a onesie and I'm just going to tuck the sleeves into the rectangle that I have created. Next I'm going to come in with some rubber bands and create some stripes by putting rubber bands around the rectangle. If you're interested in learning more about ice dyeing be sure to check out my website onyxartstudios.com and see all of the ice dyeing classes that I have available. I teach you different techniques and go over all of my tips and tricks that I've learned while doing lots of ice dyeing. And be sure to sign up for my mailing list so you never miss a new date or a new class. So I have added a few more rubber bands and made them into almost like a rope effect so they're not all stacked up on top of each other. I kind of made them higgledy-piggledy to be more of like an undulating rope pattern for this onesie. So next I'm going to get my trays out and these are about 12 by 18 or so and they're just plastic trays that I use for ice dyeing and I'm going to put one onesie in each one because I'm going to do different colors. And the next thing I'm going to do is to create a collar. I'm using some cardboard that I just happen to have and I'm going to wrap it into a circular shape and then I'm going to kind of measure to make sure it's about the right size and I'm just going to trim it. I don't need it to be that tall. So I'm creating a barrier to hold the ice on top of the onesies. And there are a lot of different types of ice dyeing that you can do. If you're looking for more ice dyeing inspiration, you can check out my ice dyeing playlist on my YouTube channel. I have a lot of different videos and I'll link them at the end and I'll put the link down in the description for you too. So next I'm gonna add my dye and I'm starting out with some coral pink from Dharma Trading and I'll put the link down in the description below. And I'm just adding a little bit of dye and make sure to wear a dust mask when you're doing this because you do not want to be breathing in this dye. Next I'm coming in with amethyst from Dharma Trading and I'm just putting a little bit in with this knife because I really think that I get really nice control um, with the knife. And I'm doing these dry so these have not been pre-soaked with soda ash. So on this other one, I'm going to come in with some shiitake, which is a really pretty color that does nice splits. And I'm just putting some dye right on top of that fabric and be, trying to be careful not to knock it off onto the bottom of the tray. 
which is easier said than done. Next, I'm coming in with some rust brown. And I'm doing my best to put the rust on the parts that I have not put the shiitake. So I just kind of want to fill in those blank spots. Next, I'm going to come in with some soda ash and I'm going to just very carefully sprinkle it on top of the dye. This is going to help fix the dye into the cotton fibers. So it's an important step and it's going to give you some really nice vibrant colors and help it stay and not wash out after you wash your onesies. So now I'm putting some ice on and for the first few pieces, I'm just kind of trying to be careful. I don't want to knock the dye off of the fabric. I'm just filling up the collars with ice. I don't want to use too much ice because it'll dilute the dye, but I want to have enough to get a nice distribution of the dye. So here they are, they're starting to kind of melt. I recommend letting them sit overnight or even for 24 hours. Here it is where it's been completely melted and there is some dye runoff and it's kind of sitting on the bottom which is good because then it's kind of soaking up a little bit more of that dye and now it's finally time to open them up so i'm just going to squeeze them out and just get rid of that excess dye and i'm going to just take off the rubber bands ever so carefully this is always the most exciting part of all dyeing projects and oh wow that one got some really nice color I like how the warm tones from the coral pink mix with the cooler tones from the amethyst it split very nicely and I think it kind of looks like an agate or some kind of geological formation next is the shiitake and the rust brown which has a lot more negative space but it looks kind of like a stripy pattern and um, the shiitake split beautifully. Shiitake is a really pretty sort of neutral tone that splits into purples and yellows, and it's just one of my favorite colors to ice dye with. So the next thing I'm gonna do is rinse them in cold until the water runs clear. And these ones are the same color, in the same color family at least, so I'm gonna rinse them together. So I'm just gonna rinse them till they run clear, which can be a while, and then I wash them on hot with Synthropol and dry them on hot to set the dye. And here they are after they have been completely dried and washed. And I just think they turned out so pretty. I love them. So let me know down in the comments what kind of colors you like to do with ice dyeing and what kind of dyes you usually use. I'm always curious to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and go follow me on social media at Onyx Art Studios and check out my website for my online workshops. I have Skillshare workshops and live online workshops. If you're looking for more ice dyeing inspiration, I've linked some videos at the end here for you to check out. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy your dyeing process. I'll see you guys next time.